Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba' Ayyul Ahbab Continuing on in our study of a treatise Azim Rifkin Ahl Sunnah bi Ahl Sunnah by Alama Sheikh a Sheikh Abdul Masan Al Abad Hafid Allah Taala min went from one of our major scholars in this time. Uh, one of the Kibar ulama, although he doesn't hold a position as the Kibar ulama, for example, in Saudi Arabia, but he is known for his fadl and his ilm and his fiqh and has been invited to be a part of the committee of major scholars, but chooses to continue to teach in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ayyullah, bad. We left off where Alama. Abdul Mahsin al Abad was saying, Qal, Qal al-Shaykh, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, Indeed, those who are occupied with Islamic knowledge from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, those who traverse the way of the pious predecessors of the Ummah, are at the same time in dire need of trying to bring about harmony and rectification amongst themselves especially since they are very few in number in comparison to the groups and sects that deviated from the way of the pious predecessors of this ummah. So the Shaykh, Hafidullah Ta'ala, mentioned the importance of being one body. And that Ahl Sunnah is few in numbers because when you look around the world, you look at many, uh, the various different societies, whether they be Muslim or non-Muslim, you find that, in fact, Ahl Sunnah, those people really calling to the minhaj of the Salaf, salaf al-Salih, that they're, that they're few in number. They're really few, although, what, what Allah, and Ham, they're growing. They're growing in America. In America, you have, and in the West in general. Uh, of course, in Yemen, we've seen massive uh, iqbal, you know, a, a lot of acceptance of the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. And this has been from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thumma, and so, due to this, Ahl Sunnah is in need of one another. And Ahl Sunnah is in need to stick together as one hand, as the Prophet وسلم, described uh, the believer, a mu'min kal mu'min lil bunyan, a mu'min lil mu'min kal bunyan, yushidduhu ba'duhu ba'duhu. The believer to another believer, is like a, a building or a structure. They strengthen one another. And this is exactly what the Sheikh said. He said that we're in need of harmony and rectification amongst, our, uh, amongst themselves, especially since they are few in number. And then he said, over 10 years ago and towards the final period of the two virtuous scholars, our Sheikh Abdelaziz bin Baz and Sheikh Mohammed bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah, a very small group from Ahl Sunnah took it upon themselves to warn against some of the sects that opposed the way of the pious predecessors. And this action of theirs is praiseworthy and much appreciated. So the Sheikh was giving respect to those ulama from Ahl Sunnah that took, took up the call to refute Ahl Bidah and put effort and energy in defending the religion of Islam from deviation. Then the Shaykh said, Ta'ala, however, what is regrettable is that after the passing away of these two scholars, some of this group directed themselves towards undermining some of their brothers from Ahl Sunnah, both within this country and outside of it, who themselves call to adhere to the way of the Salaf. It was from the right of these scholars, meaning these du'at, upon them that they accept their good and strengthen them and rectify any mistakes that occurred from them if it was established that it was a mistake. After this, they should not occupy themselves with basing their gatherings on mentioning them and warning against them. Rather, they should busy themselves with seeking knowledge, teaching, and calling to it. So the Sheikh brought about several important points that we highlighted in the last sitting. 
that Ahl Sunnah should not busy themselves with the mistakes of Ahl Sunnah. Meaning that, yes, if your brother from Ahl Sunnah uh, has made a mistake, no matter who it is, Ahl Bid'ah, Ahl Sunnah, they make a mistake that if there, of course, is uh, Maslaha, you must uh, try to, uh, to correct them or advise them or uh, refute their mistake. But to spend time on people who have the same methodology, trying to belittle them, debase them, and criticize them, is not befitting for a person for Ahl Sunnah, and this is for the various reasons that the Shaykh has already mentioned, and there's no benefit in that. But rather, if it is necessary, advise your brother or sister, uh, correct them, and move on. Move on and continue teaching, continue calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, making da'wah of Allah, and continue in your own studies. All of these things, we're in an incredible, uh, we, we have an, a, an immense need to rectify ourselves and to continue seeking knowledge and spreading that knowledge. And this is even the state of the ulama. So what about us? If the scholars of Ahl Sunnah have a need to make revision, have a need to continue to be in the books and continue teaching, then what about us? What about us who are much less than them in status, in stature, in, in knowledge, in, in fiqh, in understanding of the religion, in wisdom, in age, in all of those things, that we are in even a greater need to not busy ourselves with the flesh of our brothers and sisters, but rather to busy ourselves with that which will benefit us and benefit uh, others. The Shaykh said, Allah Ta'ala, this is the correct methodology of rectification and reform that our Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz was upon, the Imam of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in this present time. May Allah have mercy upon him. The people who dedicate themselves to knowledge from Ahlul Sunnah in this time are very few, and they are in need of increasing themselves in number, not decreasing. They are in need of joining together, not boycotting. The saying of the grammarians can be applied to them. The diminutive cannot be made smaller. So meaning that what is already tiny cannot be made smaller. So Ahlul Sunnah is in a great need. So for example, if you have a brother, a caller to Islam, a Dai, or a... Uh, a scholar or a student of knowledge or what have you in a very far locality that is calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and in that locality you don't find anyone else who's calling to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you find mistakes with this particular brother perhaps this particular brother may have even some small issues or uh, things maybe things even in creed that needs to re be rectif rectified but we're talking about that they've made these mistakes, but that they're still from Ahl Sunnah. We're not talking about someone who's from Ahl Bid'ah. So let's clarify that. So perhaps this brother has fallen into some mistakes, but they're teaching, and a lot of people in that locality are benefiting from them. Is it better to spread that individual's mistakes and destroy their status with even the, the in, in the eyes of the people in that locality? and then have, have a void there, have no one calling there? Or is it better to advise that individual who is from Ahl Sunnah, who needs to rectify their khalal, rectify their mistakes? And of course, I think we would agree, Ayul Ahbab, that from the Musalah and the Mufasid, when we look at the benefits and the harms, that we have to look that it would be much, uh, more, uh, it would be much more beneficial to, for that person to remain teaching Kitab Allah wa sallam to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to advise them. Not spend time lecturing upon them. Making lectures from whole different countries trying to destroy their status. And this is a real situation where we've heard about individuals dedicating khutbahs in faraway lands, literally 3,000 miles away or however, however many thousands of miles away. The other side of the world practically. Dedicating lectures to bringing an individual to... to uh, an individual who has the same ulama, the same methodology, to tear their status down. 
in a chutpah in their land. So we have to look at what our priorities are. Our priorities rectifying the communities, our priorities to destroy people. Are we trying to make the Dawah smaller than it is? Or are we trying to uh, spread the Dawah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam? Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, you know that from the major principles of the religion is to bring the hearts together, to unite the word and rectify the relationships between the people. Indeed, Allah the Most High said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, So fear Allah and rectify all matters of difference amongst you. He also subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّسِمُوا بِأَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah, and be not divided amongst yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَا تَكُونُوا وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِن بَعْدِ مَا جَاهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, And do not be like those who divided and differed amongst themselves after the clear proofs had come to them. So all of these, these ayat that Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned are, in the shahid here, is that not to differ. Don't break into groups and sects. And be one body. And we take other lessons from this that we should not be hasty in our judgments to take people who are known for the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, away from the sunnah. Don't divide don't divide. But rather, we should be striving to be one hand. Hold all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Alama al Abad rahimahullah ta'ala said, This is in addition to the many examples of such texts which order with unity and rectification and forbid from difference, from difference and discord. Meaning that there's so many texts from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and from the Madhab of the Salaf and those who follow the Madhab of the Salaf up until this day that emphasize rectification and forbid differing and having disharmony and discord between uh, your brothers. So the people who establish this principle are Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Our ahla, our ahla jama'ah, the people of unification. Likewise, the people who exit from this principle are ahla firqa, the people of division and discord. This was Shaykh al-Islam, this is uh, another, uh, that, that uh, nas was actually from Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, where he said, uh, he said that the, the, the principle of ahla sunnah is to bring about rectification and the principle of Ahlul Firqa is to bring about discord and divisions. So some people actually thrive on making differences. And what is very gharib in this time and age is that we see people who associate themselves with Ahlul Sunnah, who are known to be Salafi bi idnillah. This is in accordance, we, we believe according to the Zahir. But some of the things we see coming from them, it makes us question that that we see that all they do is try to destroy and belittle anything which is not in accordance with them, not in accordance with their group of uh, brothers. This is a masiba kubra, because this is not, this begins, uh, and, and we see the manifestation of it in this situation, of al-wal al uh, <clears throat> al bara being distorted falling into hizbiya, into partisanship, meaning that you're either with us or you're against us. This is what George Bush called, uh, called to. This is what others from uh, anonymous Muslims uh, called to. So that's not the method we want. Instead, we want to call the people to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ahlul Sunnah should give Ahlul Sunnah precedence in treatment and respect and maintaining the harmony, striving to maintain the harmony. Not because you have a personal beef with a brother that you're going to let that become out in the open and it become 
a, a, a cause for partisanship for his via, a door for opening up his via. If I see you sitting with so-and-so because I got beef with him, then I'm going to boycott you. If I see you speaking with so-and-so again, then, uh, you know, me and the brothers or me and the sisters, we're going to leave you. These are real situations. And it's almost, well, I'm saying, I, what we see, brothers and sisters, what we've heard is amazing. I, I would never have thought this, that we would see this amongst Muslims. Because we left disbelief to come to believe, come to Iman. And these kind of things were considered petty in our jahiliya, in our, our, our life before Islam. We consider these differences petty, where people uh, would say these kind of things. You know, that they, they, we had certain words for them, which I cannot, Akramak Mawal, articulate right now. But this is some really sissiness, Ya Ikhwan. And I, I, I don't like to come outside of the Mustalahad Ilmi, but this is the best way to describe that. Where I saw you sitting with so and so, you better leave them. Uh, da, da, da. You know, we heard you were doing this. We, what is this? The spying. The Prophet said, The Prophet said, Beware of suspicion, because very, very suspicion is the worst of, of, of speech. And do not become has do not have hasid, do not have envy for one another. Well I tajasu and do not spy upon one another. But we see brothers and sisters actually who spy. There are certain brothers you can't invite to your house because they will look through your books. And if they see one book they disagree with, oh, why do you have a book by so and so? So and so I was warned by against by so and so. Ah, you better get rid of that, or I'm gonna warn you. I know a person, a famous a famous bookstore in Medina that we used to visit. And still try to when we go to Medina. And uh, the brother was telling me, who runs the store, has been there for many years. He, he said uh, that some people come in there and they actually try to advise him about certain books on the shelf. Okay, he's a businessman. These books, his book is, is what you, his bookstore is a Salafi bookstore. Meaning that in that bookstore, a moment, unlike other bookstores, you'll find all like 90% of Salafi Mashaykh. Yeah, I mean, even, I would say 100%, but although there are some people who may have left the Sunnah, but have deviated, but that is what, that bookstore is based upon those books. You know, the bookstore is khas for those kind of books. But people come in there and they complain, why do you still have Sheikh so-and-so's uh, book in here? You have his books in there. What is he supposed to do, throw them away? And, and his financial uh, uh, burden, and especially if there's no, he's not spreading mistakes. If there's something dangerous and he's spreading mistakes, okay. But you, it shows you the, the nerve of some people and the, ex the extremeness that we have among some of our brothers and sisters, that they, maybe they have a desire to do good, some of them. And some of them know. And this is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point is, we should strive to have this to uh, to, to to unite Ahl Sunnah and not have divisions and discord. The Sheikh said, and all this is in his muqaddimah. He said, I have written a book on this subject entitled "O Ahl Sunnah, Be Gentle with Ahl Sunnah," which was published in the year 1424 Hijri. It was reprinted uh, reprinted in the 1426 Hijri, and then in 1428 as a part of my uh, compilation of books and essays and statements. Uh, and then the Sheikh mentioned, he said, in this book, I incorporated numerous texts from the Quran and the Sunnah and statements from the major scholars of Ahl Sunnah. This book contained the following topics, the blessing of speech and expression to preserve the tongue from speaking except in good, suspicion and spying, following up each other's mistakes, softness and gentleness, the position uh, of Ahl uh, Sunnah should take when a scholar makes a mistake that he is to be excused and not declared an innovator nor boycotted. The tribulation of criticism and boycotting from some of Ahl Sunnah in this time and how to remain safe from it. The innovation of testing people based on their personalities, based on other personalities. A warning from the tribulation of criticism and disparagement as well as Tabdi declaring others to be innovators, which has occurred from some of Ahl Sunnah in the present time. So these are some of the things the Sheikh is mentioning. So all of this is in his Muqaddimah of the treaties, once again, 
gentleness or Ahl Sunnah with Ahl Sunnah. And so we'll stop there just to keep our lessons very brief. And we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and blesses this treaties uh, are going through it to be a benefit. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all of our shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.